الحمد للہ الحمد للہ رب العالمین حمد جلیک بجلالہ و کمالی سبحانہ و تعالی لہو الحمد فی الاولا و الاخرة و هو على كل شئن قدیر نشہد و لا الہ الا اللہ وحده لا شریک له و نشہد ان سیدنا و مولانا محمد عبده و رسوله صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم اما بعد فاعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم نحن نقص علیك احسن القصص بما اوحینا علیك هذا القرآن و ان قنت من قبله ام لمن الغافلین اذ قال یوسف لی ابیه یا ابت انی رئیت احد اشر قوکبا والشمس والقمر رئیتهم لی ساجدین صدق اللہ العظیم مرے برادرز اور سسترز ان ایمان ان اسلام السلام علیکم و رحمت اللہ تعالی و برکاتہ This is Revive FM 94.0 And I'm your host Adnan Sohail on Ramadan with Revive FM. You're listening live on 94.0 FM in East London and watching on YouTube and Facebook. I would like to once again um, send greetings and salutations upon you all of our listeners and our viewers who are taking part in this broadcast. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all. <coughs> we are very fortunate that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has enabled us to gather once again during this blessed month of Ramadan where we have an opportunity to see how we can feel inspired and motivated and there is indeed no greater inspiration to us as Muslims than the Holy Quran and the words and the traditions of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as we are going through a series of lectures and, and discussions um, these are very short lectures but the main purpose of these talks is to give you a, a small anecdote, a, a small um, um, area for you to really take something back to your homes, back to your communities, back within your households and, and try yourselves to improve uh, and incline yourselves towards Allah, towards the remembrance of Allah, towards the remembrance of His beloved Habib Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And I think foremost and, and most importantly, before we begin any discussion, it's imperative that I myself uh, ensure that I practice what I preach and I ask and I pray to Allah Almighty that He enables me to be able to practice what I preach and He forgives me for any mistake that I would make or any mistake that would, uh, would occur during these lectures. We pray to Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He enables us to fast uh, in the month of Ramadan with true Iman and Ihtisab with true faith and accountability. As the hadith goes, Man Ramadana Imanan wa Ihtisaban Ghufir Allah ma taqaddam min al That whosoever fasts with true Iman and accountability, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives for that person all of it, their previous sins. Alhamdulillah, we are continuing continuing with our <coughs> lecture series and on the topic of Majma al-Qalb, the reconciliation of the heart. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enable us to incline our hearts and increase our love for Allah and the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. One of the most important aspects in our lives is to understand that we have a spiritual requirement and at the same time we have uh, modern requirements that we face daily in our, in our lives 
and, and quite importantly we, we try our best to emerge both the spiritual aspects of our worship with our practical aspects of our daily lives be it in the workplace uh, be it going around uh, be it working with one another be it shopping be it going to school college university and and we try ourselves to find a combination of both of these worlds to emerge together to ensure that we can have the satisfaction within ourselves to ensure that we can become better human beings and better muslims and and, and the the way to do that Alhamdulillah, there is no greater guidance than the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Today, we're going to follow a qasas, a story of Sayyidina Yusuf Alaihi Salam. This story itself um, is, 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 a, is a beautiful story about patience. It's a, it's a beautiful story about economic uh, management and how when you manage your assets properly it can lead towards eventual power and eventual uh, might um, in, a, in a truthful and unjust manner this story also talks about perseverance of how to uh, have your faith in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and and how patience for many years can 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 uh, can conclude with so much great uh, bounties from Allah Almighty and I think it's quite relevant to the talk uh, or to the subject uh, of our discussion uh, the Majma al Qalb, the reconciliation of components that brings about the satisfaction of our hearts. Remember, we're talking about the Marifat Allah, we're talking about the Ittaba'i Rasul, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we're talking about how leadership is important in, in, a, in a very modern life that we live in and how uh, having good leadership uh, leads to uh, reconciling our hearts if done properly with the true criteria and through uh, evaluation of ourselves at the same time having strong economical uh, managerial skills how having strong financial skills creates a sustainable environment for an individual and with that strong financial backing how one is able to support not just himself but those around him uh, his family his household and also it is one way of uh, tackling extreme poverty but Quran and Hadith and the life of the Prophet there are various teachings of how we can uh, conduct ourselves in our moderate lives and in our modern lives that we are living in uh, the, the story of other Yusuf is, is a really interesting one and um, <coughs> obviously there is an entire chapter in the Holy Quran uh, surah number 12 surah yusuf which talk which which the surah itself is dedicated to sayyidina yusuf alayhi salam sayyidina yusuf alayhi salam is the son of sayyidina yaqub alayhi salam um, and again there are so many uh, vaqiyas of, of sayyidina yaqub alayhi salam that we can learn from but as i said today is is to, we're talking about sayyidina yusuf alayhi salam and as you remember, Sayyidina Yusuf al Islam um, had um, many brothers. And Sayyidina Yusuf al Islam, uh, along with his family, lived in, in, in Palestine, in, in Philistine. Um, and Hadrat Yusuf al Islam one day was with his brothers. And uh, unfortunately, his, his brothers uh, checked him. Uh, Sayyidina Yusuf al Islam uh, fell into a, a, a deep hole and his brothers had left him so then Yusuf was in that hole for many many uh, for a long period uh, of time and Sayyidina Yusuf um, being in that uh, hole for many years uh, persevered and, and, and this unfortunately was uh, something that uh, really upset uh, Hazrat uh, Yaqub when he found out that his brothers had left Sayyidina Yusuf Islam in the hall and, and he was there for, for many years. So one day um, the, uh, some people from Egypt, from Misr, uh, they were traveling uh, and they had seen Sayyidina Yusuf Islam in this well. 
So what happened was <coughs> those people took Sayyidina Yusuf uh, from uh, Palestine all the way to uh, Egypt and they <coughs> sold Sayyidina Yusuf as a slave uh, to uh, the chief minister or, or uh, at that time the chief minister, the head of Egypt, his name was Aziz. So Aziz had treated Sayyidina Yusuf really well. He'd given um, um, Yusuf um, a great magnitude and he would also, um, uh, th he was very grateful uh, for Sayyidina Yus Yus Yusuf a.s. Um, 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 dedication uh, to him. And Hazrat Yusuf uh, over the years uh, grew uh, as, uh, and this is a very a known fact, that Sayyidina Yusuf was a very beautiful uh, 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 individual um, uh, who, who, who had uh, embodied uh, the, the greatness of beauty. Um, um, and then you read, re read uh, the story of Zulaikha when she saw uh, the Prophet Yusuf uh, out of the beauty of Sayyidina Yusuf she chopped off her hands and, and this is how beautiful Sayyidina uh, Yusuf was. Uh, in addition to this Sayyidina Yusuf over the years had built up uh, great wisdom uh, again through his physical uh, being um, as a Prophet Sallallahu uh, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestows great uh, bounties uh, upon prophets but in the physical human nature of Sayyidina Yusuf we see beauty was one characteristics that he had the second was, was wisdom and, and Sayyidina uh, Yusuf was a very uh, modest individual Alhamdulillah so one day uh, the king uh, Aziz he had a dream and, in, and, and this, all of this waqiyah and all of this qissa is in the Qur'an. Okay, all of this is in the Qur'an. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to um, uh, move on to the, to the main aspect of, of, of discussion. So the king uh, had a dream. Uh, in that dream, uh, he, he saw that there were seven healthy uh, cows um, or seven um, healthy cows and seven uh, thin really uh, skinny cows so and, and in that he saw that um, there was some sort of um, uh, default uh, defect with some of these animals so the king was quite troubled when he saw this in his dream and he was wondering what could this mean so he called for Sayyidina Yusuf uh, to come because he knew that Sayyidina Yusuf had, had a great gift so Sayyidina Yusuf <coughs> he, he came and he interpreted that dream of the, of, of the King Aziz. So what Sayyidina Yusuf said to him was that over the next seven years there would be plenty some in terms of crops, in terms of food throughout the land. You'll see um, uh, crops and you'll see the economy flourish over the next seven years. Then the seven years after that, there'll be a great famine. There'll be a, um, a decline uh, in terms of agricultural growth. There'll be no crops and there'll be no food for people to live on. <coughs> so when the king heard this from Sayyidina Yusuf Islam, he, he had freed Sayyidina Yusuf from, from slavery and Sayyidina and he was so impressed by Sayyidina Yusuf that Sayyidina Yusuf and this is beautiful now Sayyidina Yusuf was so strong he said to the king give me the responsibility and I will manage the economical uh, situation of the country so Hazrat Yusuf became you could say the finance minister or the agricultural minister at that time and he said he will ensure that in the first seven years of growth he'll be able to sustain and maintain enough 
agriculture that when the famine hits seven years afterwards there'll be enough food and crop for the people so that at least they'll have enough food to survive and, and this is the uh, great wisdom and, and hikmah of Sayyidina Yusuf Islam. so here the story comes in um, from Surah Yusuf verse number 54 when Surah Yusuf says وَقَالَ الْمَلِكُ الْإِئْتُنِي بِهِ إِسْتَخَلِّسْهُ لِنَفْسِي فَلَمَّا قَلَّمَهُ قَالَ إِنَّكَ الْيَوْمَ لَدَيْنَا مَكِينٌ أَمِينٌ So this is uh, when the king said bring him to me so that I may appoint him specifically as an advisor. So the king bought out Sayyidina Yusuf and to appoint Sayyidina Yusuf as an advisor. And I, and, and I listen to this. فَلَمَّا كَلَّمَهُ قَالَ إِنَّكَ الْيَوْمَ لَدَيْنَا مَكِينٌ أَمِينٌ and, and this is now the translation of Shaykh Islam's Arfan Quran and this is now the interesting thing that could be quite relevant in the modern day and age. So when the king had a one-to-one -one dialogue with him, he felt highly impressed. Now, you know when you go for job interviews, can you imagine you and, and this is a big job you're, you're going to be the next agricultural minister or the finance minister so this is now an interview process that the king is having with Sayyidina Yusuf al-Islam so Shaykh al-Islam says فَلَمَّا كَلَّمَهُ قَالَ إِنَّكَ الْيَوْمَ لَيْدَيْنَ مَكِينٌ أَمِينٌ that so when the king had a one-to-one -one dialogue with him in explanation of this dialogue Shaykh al-Islam writes in brackets he felt highly impressed with him so there was something good that came from this interview um, process between Yusuf al-Islam and the king and said so this is now the king saying O oh Yusuf surely from today onward you are a man of authority and trust with us i.e. you are inducted to the governance of state there are two things which were quite important for Sayyidina Yusuf -Islam to be appointed as the governor the head of finance or however you want to interpret it and those are Ladaina Makid and Wa Amin that you are a man of authority and you are a man of trust the king entrusted Hazrat Yusuf and he ensured that Hazrat Yusuf was a man of authority. You see, for 14 years he is now to manage the st state affairs of, of Egypt and he knows that within seven years there will be an increase in terms of economical growth then after seven years there will be an economical decline. Look at the greatness and the wisdom of Sayyidina Yusuf that because of his authority and because of his trust he was appointed and this is an example of, of modern day leadership of modern day rulers or anybody that's going to be appointed in any position how many of us would appoint an individual based upon his authority or his trust we see this uh, discussion uh, across the political arena that whenever anybody is going to be appointed does anybody go through a thorough process of interviewing somebody and making sure and checking whether that this person is right for the job? The Quran even gives a, a, a guideline in terms of appointing a right advisor or the governor. And, and again, Alhamdulillah, we see this uh, from the from the Quran itself that Sayyidina Yusuf even had an interview process with the king and after that interview process the king said that you're a man of authority and, and justice. Alhamdulillah now look at the beautiful part here he's being appointed by the king as a governor look what Hazrat Yusuf so we're talking about economical management we're talking about having the confidence and this is kind of key things that many individuals uh, would, would lack. It's all about understanding the process, strategy, policy. This is all aspects in becoming good leaders, foreseeing and forecasting what is going to happen. People uh, might go into decline. There might be some sort of issues happening with them financially. Do you have the foresight to, uh, to judge what will happen in the next five years or the next ten years. Look at the response of Sayyidina Yusuf He says, Qala ij'alni ala khazainil ardi inni hafizun alim. So Yusuf says, 
if you really want me to, and uh, this part is and an explanation uh, by Sheikh Islam, Dr. Muhammad Tariq Qadri, Arfan al Quran. If you haven't got it, get it. It's an excellent translation uh, of the Holy Quran. Uh, Sheikh Islam um, in bracket says, <coughs> So, Hadrat Yusuf al Islam says, If you really want to want me to accomplish some special assignment, because this is a special assignment, remember. Hazrat Yusuf Islam was bought by the king to look at this situation in terms of the dream. So he then advised that there will be a growth economically, then there will be a famine. So now he is saying, if you want me uh, uh, to, to come to this special uh, assignment, appoint me as a minister and trustee of the treasures in the land of Egypt. He's, he's, he's bringing out his 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 ability and capacity he knows his worth he knows his authority and he's a trustworthy person so he's giving his uh, um, neck on the line and, and saying that i have the capacity and ability to become the trustee of the land of egypt and look after its finances and, and ensure that everything is in place indeed i'm well versed in resource management and resource resource protection and an expert in financial management alhamdulillah look at this we we think about how can we learn about financial management or how can we learn about um, um, resource management we look at uh, many organizations that have an hr uh, department or a hr manager who looks at various uh, employees in the office and wondering how can we manage staff look at the example of sayyidina yusuf al-islam in the quran there's an entire uh, where surah that talks about the processes of of managing staff the uh, having the forecast of uh, understanding what will be the outcomes or what will be the processes alhamdulillah the quran is full of wisdom and uh, we need to relate this in our lives this concept of economical uh, of economic uh, economically managing something isn't just for the workplace but it's also for ourselves to ensure that we understand that we need to survive in the world that we're living if there is a, an economical deficit in our households how can we uh, build up a financial budget to ensure that we can survive we can uh, we can live on x amount of money we need to look after our children in a halal way in a halal income to ensure that our our spouses are looked after our children are looked after after and our families looked after our households are, are running and again to manage these things it's important that we do it but in a manner that is productive and effective a lot of people will will think oh, let's let's leave it in the hands of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala no sometimes practically you have to do the the duty uh, the due diligence yourself to ensure that you are able to survive in this world Sayyidina Yusuf Islam didn't say to uh, the king Nani, um, uh, this is the dream that you have and inshallah Allah will make it easy for you. No, he gave a practical solution, creating uh, resource management, creating uh, a finance management, creating the, uh, the, the departments and the team to ensure that they can survive over the next 40 years. Alhamdulillah, uh, it's, it's, it's amazing that what we can learn from from the holy quran and, and and from what we can learn from these amazing stories so the relationship between Hazrat yusuf -Islam and his brothers sayyidina yaqub -Islam, and the perseverance and, and patience uh, is something i just wanted to focus on and and like i said there are so many uh, aspects uh, to this as well so the 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 uh, verse goes on and it talks about um the the uh, the aspects of, of of famine so um there was uh, obviously um the growth in the first seven years um after the growth um alhamdulillah through the wisdom and, and mercy of Sayyidina Yusuf al -Islam, uh, many people didn't uh, starve in Egypt because uh, they were quite well protected uh, but uh, even though Egypt protected itself uh, other areas of the globe uh, the neighboring areas like place like Palestine they were suffering so what happened 
the people of Palestine must have heard that Egypt is doing quite well. So one day, um, the brothers of Hadrat Yusuf al -Islam, they traveled all the way from Egypt, uh, sorry, from Palestine all the way to um, Egypt uh, to see whether or not they can get some food um, from Egypt. When the group of uh, brothers arrived in Egypt, Straight away, Sayyidina Yusuf al Islam, and, and this is now the, the, the spiritual decree and the divine uh, intervention of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He's bestowed this quality and traits in, its, uh, in, in, in His prophets, uh, alayhim salam, that Sayyidina Yusuf al Islam, as soon as those brothers came, He recognized them as His, as his brothers. But obviously, because many years had passed, uh, none of the brothers uh, recognized Sayyidina Yusuf al -Islam. And Sayyidina Yusuf al um, recognized that one of his brothers uh, was not with them. Uh, and that was the youngest brother of Sayyidina Yusuf al -Islam, um, Sayyidina bin Yameen, uh, who was not with, uh, with, with, the, with the brothers. So, what did he do? And, and, and look at the foresight, uh, look at the, uh, the, 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 the way of how Sayyidina Yusuf Islam foresaw the, 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 the actions and, and ensured that through patience and perseverance, he changed the conditions of, of people. So, so look at uh, the skill sets and, and the, the, the managerial uh, understanding and, and the the negotiation skills of Sayyidina Yusuf al -Islam. So Sayyidina Yusuf al -Islam, obviously they asked for food. So Sayyidina Yusuf al -Islam, so they, uh, so what he did was, so what Sayyidina Yusuf al -Islam did was, he asked his brothers um, that he's given them the food, but next time when they come, they must bring their younger brother, Bin Yameen, with them. Uh, then if he does that, then they would uh, be given more food. So the brothers, they went back to Palestine. Uh, they approached the father, Sayyidina uh, Yaqub al-Islam. And, and remember this, Sayyidina Yaqub al-Islam did not want um, his, his son, uh, Bin Yameen, um, to, to go uh, with <coughs> his brothers uh, to, to, to Egypt or to Misr because Sayyidina Yaqub uh, after what happened with Sayyidina Yusuf uh, could not manage and could not cope with losing uh, another son but eventually uh, as a father he was convinced by his, his sons uh, to take uh, Bin Yameen um, uh, uh, to, to Egypt so Sayyidina Bin Yameen um, went with his uh, brothers uh, to Egypt and, and and this is now um, this is where the the, the, the story uh, kind of changes and and, and it's a, it's beautiful that all of this is, is even mentioned uh, in the Quran as well um, so we read now from um, we read from um, verse number um, 66 and, and, and this is a, a beautiful aspect that Sayyidina Yusuf -Islam, his main purpose was to ensure that Sayyidina Yaqub would travel from uh, Palestine to Egypt and, and, and one of the ways of doing this was to ensure that Hazrat bin Yameen would be in his uh, side and, and, and by having him by his side, Sayyidina Yaqub would come and, and then obviously they would be able to meet Sayyidina uh, Yusuf uh, salam. So what happened when Hazrat Yusuf saw so, uh, Bin Yameen, uh, he was so happy uh, and it's, it's beautiful because Sayyidina Yusuf was speaking to Sayyidina uh, Bin Yameen uh, alone and, and Sayyidina Yusuf told him who he was and that he was his, his brother. And, and Sayyidina Yusuf already had told him that you will be staying here with me and your brothers would go back to Egypt but without you. So how did Sayyidina Yusuf do this? 
what happened was Sayyidina Yusuf I saw it in the Quran as well Sayyidina Yusuf Islam place one of the drinking cups of the king uh, in the bag of uh, bin Yamin, his brother, his youngest brother. So when, when, when his youngest brother's bag was searched, uh, what they did was they found that the cups were in his bag and then they accused bin Yamin for stealing the cups. So this was, remember, this was the plan of Sayyidina uh, Yusuf alayhi salam. So um, Sayyidina Yusuf alayhi salam, he obviously commanded his younger brother to remain in Egypt as a punishment. Why did you steal this? But it was part of the plan. So the brothers had a promise with their father Sayyidina Yaqub alayhi salam to bring to ensure that uh, the younger brother re returns and they pleaded with Sayyidina Yusuf alayhi salam to please allow the younger brother to return with them but he said no he has to stay here so what happened they went back to uh, Philistine to Sayyidina Yaqub alayhi salam and now Sayyidina Yaqub alayhi salam uh, was in more sorrow and pain. He he'd become he he cried so much that it stated that he had become blind because the the the, the number of times that he would cry in in pain for not seeing Sayyidina Yusuf uh, and uh, then what happened? It was just amazing that according to um, to uh, to the Quranic verse. Um, قال لن أرسله معكم حتى تؤتوني موثقا من الله لا تأتونني به إلا أن يحاط بكم فلما أعطى أعطوه موثق قال الله على ما نقول وقيل Yaqub alayhi said, I shall not send him with you until you give me a firm promise by swearing a solemn oath by Allah that you shall certainly bring him back to me. Unless you all are, the, are beset somewhere or slain. Then when they gave Yaqub the firm promise, he said, Allah is a guardian to uh, watch over what you're saying. So this is the part where uh, they promised Sayyidina Yaqub alayhi that they would uh, bring back the younger brother to them. And Alhamdulillah, the Quran then talks about uh, the story uh, in Yasriq, Fakad Saraka Akhun Lahu Min Kabul, Fasarraha Yusufu Fi Nafsi, Walam Yubdiha Lama Lahum. They said, if he has committed theft, then nothing to wonder at. Indeed, his brother Yusuf has also committed theft before. So Yusuf kept it uh, in his heart and did not reveal it to them and said, Yours is the worst case, and Allah knows well and whatever you are. They said, Oh, قالوا يا أيها العزيز إن له أبا شيخا كبيرا فخذ أهدنا مكانه إن نراك من المحسنين. They said pleading to uh, the king, O oh, Aziz, if his uh, his father is an aged elderly person, so detain any one of us instead. Surely we have seen you among the generous people. قال معاذ معاذ الله أن نأخذ إلا من من وجدنا متعنا إنده إن إذا لذ إن إذا لا إن إذا Yusuf alayhi salam said, Allah save us from detaining someone other than him with whom we have found our item, then we shall become of unjust. And, 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 and this entire story is beautiful because no matter what is happening, Sayyidina Yusuf alayhi salam is still firm in ensuring that he keeps his younger brother with him. And they tried everything to ensure that uh, the, that, um, that the younger brother stays with them. So Alhamdulillah, the story then uh, goes on and then they came back again uh, for the final time uh, the brothers had to make a third trip to to Egypt and in this third trip they were very poor now because remember the famine had hit its height uh, there was only a few things to trade uh, and and they came to Sayyidina Yusuf alayhi salam when Sayyidina Yusuf alayhi salam saw their state he has he, he asked them a very simple question do you now realize what you did to Yusuf and they were stunned by that question before that they did not know that Sayyidina Yusuf alayhi salam was their brother so when he asked that question to them they realized that this is Hadrat Yusuf alayhi salam and he is our brother so when they realized this 
that is the day they realize what they did to Yusuf by uh, by leaving him behind and, and leaving him in the well. Sayyidina Yusuf had gone through so much hardship and they knew what he did. However, look at the beauty of Sayyidina Yusuf What he did was, he, he, then, he then prayed for his uh, brothers. And, and, and again, all of this is in the Quran. Um, and then he gave, uh, f because obviously he knew about the blindness of his father. He said to his brothers, take this qameez, this, this shirt. And uh, he, then, he then said, lay the shirt over the eyes of my father. And then he asked, his brothers to bring the entire family back to uh, to Egypt with them, and again, all of this is stated uh, in 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 the on, in the Holy Quran. Alhamdulillah, we, we can see that, um, and, and I'm, again, I'm just trying to uh, find this exact verse where um, here, uh, verse number ninety three. In Surah Yusuf, where is Habu Bikamisi Haza Fal Kuhu Allah Wajihi Abi Yati Basiran Watuni Bialikum Jamia Abialikum Ajmain? Take the shirt of mine and cast it over my father's face, he will recover his sight. Then bring me the whole of your family. Walamma Fasalatil Riru Kal Abuhum. Inni la ajidu riha Yusuf lawla an tufannidun. When the caravan left Egypt, his father Sayyidina Yaqub said while sitting in Canaan, If you do not consider me unstable due to sen uh, senil senility, I'm smelling the fragrance of Yusuf alayhi salam. You can smell the, the, the shirt uh, and, and smell Sayyidina Yusuf alayhi salam. قَالُوا تَاللَّهِ إِنَّكَ لَفِي دَلَالِكَ الْقَدِيمِ They said, but Allah, you are certainly in the same ecstasy of your old I they, they said to his father that you're still remembering Sayyidina Yusuf alayhi salam. Alhamdulillah. فَلَمَّا أَنْ جَاءَ الْبَشِيرُ الْأَلْقَاهُ عَلَى وَجْهِ فَرْطَدَّ بَسِيرًا And when the bearer of the glad tidings arrived, and he cast that shirt over Sayyidina Yaqub's face, his sight returned. The same moment, Hazrat Yaqub say, Did I not say to you that I know from Allah what you do not know? Alhamdulillah. It's, it's beautiful that we see this entire situation and, and, and we see what the great prophets had, had ordered and, and had, had, had told their children and, and, and told them that look at look what we can learn from the stories of Sayyidina Yusuf and from the stories of Hazrat Yaqub and look what's uh, what happens when Yusuf says Qala sofa astaghfirullakum rabbi innahu wal ghafurur raheeb Sayyidina Yaqub says soon shall I pray to my Lord for forgiveness for you indeed he alone is most forgiving and ever merciful but the beautiful story is here now that when the entire family returns to Egypt Sayyidina Yaqub along with his uh, sons and, and this is the beautiful uh, aspect um, when Sayyidina Yaqub returns to, to, to Misr فَلَمَّا دَخَلُوا عَلَى يُوسُفَ آوَى إِلَيْهِ أَبْوَيْهِ وَقَالَ دْخُلُوا مِسْرَ إِن شَاءَ اللَّهُ آمِنِينَ then when they, I, all of the members of the family, came to the use of Islam, he presented them a reception outside the city in the form of a royal procession, compromising of extensive transport, arrangements, soldiers, generals, and public. You know, we see, you know, when, when, um, when a president comes to the United Kingdom, uh, for example, the United, uh, President of the United Kingdom, uh, President of the United States of America, uh, Donald Trump, when he came to the UK, um, one of the highest honors is if you get a state visit by the Queen, I, you get to meet the Queen uh, at a palace, then you get to see the procession of armies. That is considered as the highest state visit 
a greatest honor anybody could ever have as a delegation coming to this country and this is the great honor that Sayyidina Yusuf had for his father this is to show respect to his father not because um, and, and remember it is not to show that Sayyidina Yaqub uh, being a prophet or being a messenger, no, is to show the worldly respect that Sayyidina Yusuf over time has gained through his uh, leadership, through his managerial uh, leadership within Egypt, that now he is of a high magnitude and he's giving the honor to his father and family. Uh, with processions of armies and generals, the full royal flair is given in honor of Sayyidina Yaqub as they en entered into Egypt. He venerated his parents and made them sit beside him. And what does uh, the king uh, or the queen do when any state visitors comes? The president will stand by the side of the king or the queen. And in this case, the Sayyidina Yaqub sat beside Sayyidina Yusuf in honor of Sayyidina Yaqub that we have such a great guest and all embraced them and offered them welcome and said, enter Egypt and if Allah so wills then stay here with peace and comfort Alhamdulillah and, and, and this again shows that this again shows the beauty but uh, the beauty and the patience of Sayyidina Yaqub and the, and, 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 and the constant patience and remembrance of, of Hadrat Yusuf to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and through his trials and tribulations and tests, it was rewarded by the entrance of Egypt of his family. And I just wanted to end here that when he, Sayyidina Yaqub entered, and this is what the Quran now says, <coughs> and he seated his parents on the throne and they all fell down prostrated before Sayyidina Yusuf and Hazrat Yusuf said, Oh Father, this is the interpretation of that dream of mine which I had seen long before. To most of the commentators, it took 40 years that when Hazrat Yusuf family came back to Egypt to meet him. And what dream? The dream which I uh, narrated to you at the beginning of my lecture where Sayyidina Yusuf saw this in his dream I read the, the the dream is when Yusuf said to his father oh my venerable father I have seen in a dream 11 stars and the sun and the moon I've seen them prostrating themselves before me and look at the beautiful uh, beauty of the Quran that when they entered Egypt when he saw them prostrating he then knew and understood the meaning and definition of the hadith Let's learn from the qasas and the stories of Sayyidina Yusuf Let's not just take the, uh, the stories of, of prophets uh, as a means of recitation, but as a means of uh, guidance and examples and, and see the various aspects of life, whether it's perseverance, patience, whether it's even economical management or leadership skills. We can learn so much from the stories of the prophets. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enable us to understand the Quran and the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Until next time, uh, from your host Adnan Suhail, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Four point oh on the radio, on your mobile, and online.